Hi, and welcome to the Module 1, Section 7 example. Uh, we're going to talk about a discrete and continuous compounding example, an example where it has both discrete and continuous compounding in it, similar to a, a previous example we did, uh, but this one has some comp continuous compounding uh, problems in it also. Okay, so here's the example. An account credits interest using 6% interest rate compounded biannually for the first year, a 6% discount rate compounded annually for the second year, and a force of interest of 6% for the third year. So I've got 6% in all three situations but it's used completely different in each, in, in each year. The question is, how much must be invested uh, in order to have 1,000 at the end of three years? So my timeline's gonna look like this. Uh, so I've got uh, 1,000 at time three. I need to discount that back to time zero. I can't just use one arrow and discount it all the way back. That would kind of imply I'm gonna use the same uh, discounting factor in each year, and that's not gonna be the case in this situation. So I need to discount it from time three back to time two using what I'm gonna denote as a, a V sub three. This is some notation that I'll pick up again in module four, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and use it now also. Uh, and then I need to take that amount that I end up having at time two and discount that back by to time one. So I'll use a V sub two to denote that discount factor. Uh, so the, the annual discount factor for year two is V two. And then the annual discount factor for year one, uh, I'm gonna denote by V one. And then my, my final answer would be that uh, relating the cap X to the 1000 is that cap X will be 1000 times the V three times the V two times the V one. Okay, so I'm gonna need a little bit room. So I'm gonna delete, delete the, uh, the timeline and uh, there's I've got the same expression that I had before that I'm trying to solve. So now let's 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 look uh, you know at, at what these values are v3, v2, and v1. So let's start with the third year. Uh, I'm trying to get the v3 value. Well, for the third year in the problem, I'm told that the force of interest is six percent, so delta equals 0 0.06. And I know that when I have a delta of 0 0.06, then uh, my annual discount factor is e to the minus 0 0.06. So this would be the annual e, a, annual discount factor for year three, and that would then be my v3 value. So v3 is just e to the minus uh, 0 0.06. Now let's look at the second year. Well, in the second year, I read the problem and it says during the second year, I have a 6% discount rate compounded annually. That's a D upper one. Well, D upper one is 0 0.06. That's a, uh, so with a D upper one, you just divide by one. In other words, you don't really need to do anything and, that, and, and you have the annual effective discount rate. So the annual effective discount rate is 6%. And now how do you get the V value from the, from the D value? It's one minus D. So I take one minus the 0 0.06 and that will give me the periodic, this time, in this case, it's annual, the 6% is the annual effective discount rate. So the annual discount factor would be one minus that, or, or 0.94. So for the second year, I got 0.94 is the, uh, is the uh, uh, V2 value, the annual discount factor for the second year. Now the first year gets kind of tricky because in the first year I'm told that I got a 6% interest rate compounded biannually. So compounded biannually means I got an I upper one half. I upper one half is 6%. I take the I upper one half, divide it by one half. That gives me a 12% uh, percent or 0 0.12. That's my biannual effective interest rate. Now that's a, that's a biannual effective interest rate. What I'm trying to get is the annual discount factor. Well, the biannual discount factor would be one over one plus I or one over 1.12. And so the annual would be for half of that period. So I would need to raise that to the, to the one half. So the annual discount factor would be a 1.12 raised to the negative one half. That would be my V1 value. So in the first year, uh, I've got the V1, second year I got V2, third year V3, and now I've got it. Uh, cap X then is 1,000 times the product of those annual discount factors. And when I do that arithmetic, I end up with 836.49. Uh, okay, so that's how you're going to use these. Uh, again, it's a kind of a neat problem in the sense that you got 6% in, in each year, but it's used in a completely different way. You have to read the details of the problem. Be careful reading the details. You got to pay attention to the details. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.